Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, the last few days we've been going around and making salam, and I think this has been the loudest, but I think you guys can do louder. And I make dua that Allah grant the person who makes the loudest salam a million pounds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, I'm delighted to be here amongst you in Bradford. I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless you all, and I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to enter us into the highest part of Jannah. Say Amin. In the same way he's gathered us here today, inshallah we hope to meet in the highest part of Jannah. If you look at the theme of this series of lectures, it's called Power of Worship. Over the last few days, in the few talks, we've spoken about ibadah. The word ibadah, a lot of us think, is only limited to salah and zakah and fasting. However, when you look deeper, you'll find that ibadah is everything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It could be a good thought, it could be good speech, or a good action. As long as it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the correct intention, it's considered ibadah. When you look through the stories of the Qur'an, you find that Allah jalla wa ala makes mention of different ibadat, different acts of worship. And he makes mention of some of the pious people who came before, especially the Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam. Today I want to pick up the story of Musa alayhi salam so that we able to derive a lesson to show us the power of ibadah, the power of worship. Take a moment to go back. We all know the story. Musa alayhi salam is faced with Fir'aun. Fir'aun, the pharaoh, has gathered all the magicians and there's a face-off. Now take a moment. The whole community, the whole country, the whole city have gathered to watch a spectacle. What's going to happen? What's the event? Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun against all the magicians, the best of the best. Fir'aun has gathered them in front of who? The person who claimed to be Allah. And the stakes are high. The magicians, before commencing, they tell Fir'aun, if we beat Musa and his brother, if we are victorious, you are going to give us some sort of reward. Fir'aun tells them, don't worry. Not only will I reward you, but you will be with or you will be from amongst my close circle. Eventually, Musa alayhi salam tells them to throw whatever magic they came with. Allah jalla wa ala makes mention that they threw their ropes and it was made or the people around imagine these ropes to be serpents. It was great magic. And Allah jalla wa ala tells Musa alayhi salam, don't fear. Throw your staff. Musa alayhi salam throws the staff and because it's from Allah, it's a miracle. One of the miracles of Musa alayhi salam, his staff eats up all the magic they came with. Now imagine, it's a spectacle, it's an event. Musa alayhi salam, in our terms, you know when you've got a strong team and a weak team, and you say the underdogs, they are the ones who were victorious. In this case, nobody expected Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun to be victorious. But by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were victorious. How do you think the Pharaoh felt? How do you think Fir'aun and his people felt? They were upset. They were furious. Allah Jalla wa ala tells Musa alayhi salam, he says, leave with your people because Fir'aun and his army are pursuing you. They're going to pursue you and they're going to come after you because they've lost and it's been a long time full of oppression. So Musa alayhi salam is told to leave. Eventually he goes with his people. He's running and the whole, oh, the whole of Banu Israel are going with Musa alayhi salam. Behind them is who? Fir'aun and his army and his people. They reach a point where the water or the sea is in front of them. The sea is in front of them. 
The people of Musa, alayhi salam, they say, qala ashabu Musa, inna lamudrakun. They tell Musa, after all this, you've brought us to this position. We're surely going to be caught because the army is behind us and the water is in front of us. We've got no chance. What does Musa, alayhi salam, say? Anybody knows the verse after that? What does Musa, alayhi salam, say? Qala kalla. Musa alayhi salam says, never, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. My Lord is with me and he will guide me. Look at the power of ibadah, the power of conviction that Musa alayhi salam had. Now the question is, the question is, how many of us face difficulty and hardship in our life? And when we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we feel that our dua is not answered our ibadat, we feel at times that there's no benefit. We're not seeing the fruits of it. What I want you to invite or what I want to invite you towards and study is look at the life of Musa alayhi salam before this. Before the seas parted way by the permission of Allah in order to save Musa alayhi salam and Banu Israel. What you'll notice, we'll go over some of the verses. Even before prophethood, Musa alayhi salam had refined himself as a person. So we find when he was still very young, he came from a noble family, a noble household. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of his mother, makes mention of his sister. And Allah tells the mother of Musa alayhi salam, don't worry, you bring up Musa alayhi salam for a period of time. And then you put him into the river and we will return him to you. Eventually he grows up in the house or the palace of Fir'aun. As he's a youngster and he's grown up, Allah says, وَلَمَّا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَاسْتَوَىٰ آتَيْنَاهُ حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا When he grew up, he was strong, mature. We gave him understanding and we gave him knowledge. He wasn't yet a prophet. He was not yet given nubuwa. Eventually one day he enters into the city. When he enters into the city, he finds these two people who are arguing, two people who are quarreling. One from his clan or his tribe, Banu Israel, and one from the opposition, the people of Fir'aun. So the person from his tribe or his clan says, help me. He calls out for some help. So Musa alayhi salam tries to help him. And Allah says, فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ Their enemy, Musa alayhi salam, struck him. He didn't intend to kill him, but because the blow was so strong, this person died. What does Musa alayhi salam do immediately after that? He's not yet a Nabi of Allah. He hasn't yet been given prophethood. But look at how he understands that this is from shaitan immediately. He says, Qala hadha min shaitan. He knows that this is something wrong. This is not befitting. And he asks Allah to forgive him. He says, Qala Rabbi inni nafsi li Oh Allah, I've wronged myself. I've oppressed myself. Forgive me. What's the message? We saw how, we saw how the sea parted ways for Musa alayhi salam when he needed it most. But look at the beginning of his life, the beginning of his youth. He made a promise to Allah not to use his strength in the disobedience of Allah. He made a promise to Allah not to use his strength to help those who are criminals. He made a promise to Allah not to oppress others. And similarly, in our day-to-day -day lives, we are looking for the help of Allah, we are looking for the fruits of our ibadah and our worship. Start off by rectifying yourself. Whatever resources Allah Jalla wa ala has given you, whatever goodness He's given you, whatever bounties He's bestowed upon you, use them in a way that pleases Allah. Don't use your strength, your wealth, your free time, your skill in a way that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Musa alayhi salam do after that? A man comes and tells him, Oh Musa, the people are looking for you. So, I am a well-wisher of yours. You should flee this place or this community. Allah says, 
قال عسى ربي أن يهديني سواء السبيل. Point number two. موسى عليه السلام he faces towards Madian and he says indeed or he makes a dua that Allah will guide me to the correct path. He'll guide me towards the correct way. Look at how even before prophethood he had a relationship with Allah. He had or he had put his trust in Allah. And similarly, don't wait for calamity to befall you. Don't wait for you to get into trouble so that you turn to dua. Even when things are going well, make sure you maintain that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah. Eventually, Musa alayhi salam reaches Madian. Allah says, he's fled for his life. He's got nothing. And he comes to a place where the people are, uh, are feeding or getting water for their animals. Allah says, وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَا أَمَدِيًا وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ He comes to a place where there's the water for the people of Madian. And he finds everybody getting water for their animals. However, there's two girls, two young girls waiting on the side. And Musa alayhi salam asks them, why are you waiting? And they said, we wait for the men to finish. Let them finish, then we will go with our animals. What does Musa alayhi salam do? Imagine, he's a stranger in that land. Allah says, فَسَقَ لَهُمَا Musa alayhi salam takes the animals and makes them drink. And this is point number three, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. If you want to taste the power of worship, be somebody who is helpful to others, your community members, the people who you know as well as the strangers. Musa alayhi salam didn't know who these people were. There was no relationship. He didn't have an ulterior motive. He didn't want anything from them. And imagine, he's a stranger in the land. He's got nothing. But Allah says he still went to do a good deed. He went to help these people. At times you may be driving a new town, a new community, or as you're traveling abroad and somebody needs help, it may only take you a few moments. But be that Muslim who helps others. We all know the hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says that Allah helps the servant. Allah helps his servant as long as his servant is in the service of others. As long as you help others, Allah will help you. As long as you help others, you will see the power of your worship, the power of your ibadah. Eventually, the two girls go back home and they tell their father what happened, what occurred. So the father calls for Musa alayhi salam. Eventually, they have an agreement. He wants to get one of his daughters married to Musa alayhi salam. And he tells Musa alayhi salam to remain with him for 10 years. Come help. You live with us. We'll get you married, etc. Notice how Allah Jalla wa ala says that Musa alayhi salam completed this period of time. What's the message for us? You have an agreement with somebody else, whether it's a business agreement or some other agreement where you have certain responsibilities, certain duties as well as them. Uphold your side of the agreement. Musa alayhi salam, he agreed and then he upheld the, that agreement, that period of time. We speak about how the sea parted ways, but look at all the good deeds he had before this. Look at how he was a refined individual, one of the best of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam, one of the best people to have ever walked the face of the earth. And this is before Nubuwa. Allah is telling you that when he gave his word, he stuck with it. He stuck with his side of the agreement. So be that person and you'll find bi idhnillah this power or this help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eventually we all know Musa alayhi salam receives prophethood and Allah jalla wa ala sends him to Fir'aun. In Surah Al-Kahf, towards the end, Allah jalla wa ala makes mention again of Musa alayhi salam. If you uh, ponder over the Quran and realize, you'll see Musa alayhi salam, his story is mentioned the most in the Quran. And we have the most detail of anybody from his 
upbringing, to his prophethood, to him with his family, etc. Why? Because his story is important. His story is extremely important. Towards the end of Surah Al-Kahf, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Musa alayhi salam went on a journey to seek knowledge. Why did he go on this journey? Because one day as he was amongst his people, somebody asked him a question. They said, oh Musa, who is the most knowledgeable? So without thinking much, he said, I am the most knowledgeable. So Allah Jalla wa Ala reprimanded him. And he said, oh Musa, there is a servant of ours who has been given certain knowledge that even you don't have. Imagine if you are an expert in your field and you're in a, amongst a group of people and somebody asks a question or says, who has the most knowledge? And immediately you say, I have. And then someone says, no, it's not you. What's the normal human reaction that a person would have in today's time? No, no, he knows nothing. A Nabi of Allah, what does he do? He's humble. Look at his humbleness and his humility. He asks Allah, oh Allah, show me where the servant of yours is so I can go and learn from him. And similarly, you want to benefit from your ibadah. You want to see the power of worship. You need to be humble. You need to be a person who, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not oppress others. That's why when speaking about Jannah, Allah says, this Jannah that we have made and prepared for the people, it's for the people who have certain qualities. Two of these qualities, they don't want to be higher than others in the land, i.e. not from a perspective of arrogance. And they don't want to oppress others. A Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is told that somebody knows more than you, He's humble enough to say, oh Allah, show me where the servant of yours is so I can benefit from him. Musa alayhi salam with his brother. When Allah gives him prophethood, what does he do? He calls out to Allah and he says, oh Allah, وَأَخِي هَارُونُ هُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانًا فَأَرْسِلْهُ مَعِيَ رِدْ أَنْ يُصَدِّقُنِي He also wants goodness for his family members. He says, oh Allah, my brother Harun, he is more eloquent than me. He can speak better than me. So send him with me so we can go with your message to the Pharaoh. What's the lesson for me and you? Acknowledge the strengths of those who are around you. Some of the scholars mention if there was a brother who did his, his sibling a great favor, the greatest of favors, it was Musa alayhi salam for his brother. Because he interceded to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make Harun a prophet of Allah. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, I encourage you to go through the story of Musa alayhi salam. Ask yourself, Allah granted him victory. Allah caused the sea to part ways when he needed it most. Why? What were some of the reasons? And you go through his life and you see Musa alayhi salam was a, an upright human being. Musa alayhi salam was a Nabi of Allah. Musa alayhi salam was an honest person. And the lesson is for us. Sometimes a person says, I perform my salah, I make my dua, I try my best. However, I don't see any benefit in my ibadah, in my acts of worship. Ask yourself, besides paying lip service in dua, and besides just going through the motions in salah, have I truly rectified my heart? Have I truly put my life onto the straight path or not? Have I changed for the better as a Muslim? If you're able to answer that question, bi-ithnillah, you'll able to find the power of worship. Answer it correctly and you'll find the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine a young boy, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. It's mentioned that when the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed away, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, was only about 12 or 13 years old. So while he was still young, one day the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got hold of him and he said, Ya Ghulam, he says, O oh young boy, 
إني أعلمك كلمات. Let me teach you a few good words. Then he gives him advice. Imagine he's a youngster and he says, إحفظ الله يحفظك. Protect the covenant that is between you and Allah, and Allah will protect you. Then he says, إحفظ الله تجده تجاهك أو تجده أمامك. When you protect this covenant between you and Allah, you'll find Allah in front of you. You'll find the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming. You'll find that Allah jalla wa ala will make your life easy. Then he gives him an important piece of advice that every single one of us needs, especially in the modern world we live in. He says, تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة. Know who is Allah. Be mindful of Allah, especially in times of ease. And rest assured that when your difficulty comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. You know, when a person goes through difficulty and hardship, it's human nature to turn back to Allah. It's a good thing. It's not bad. But the minute this affliction or this difficulty is removed, you find a person forgets who Allah is. Don't be that person. In many verses of the Quran, Allah tells us that that's the, the human, his nature is like that. When any calamity and hardship befalls him, he wants to remember Allah. And when goodness befalls him, he forgets who Allah is. Some go a step further to say this is only because of my intelligence. This is only because of me and me alone. Don't be that person who forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so, when you look in Surah Saba, the people of Saba, Allah Jalla wa ala says that we gave them goodness and we gave them so many bounties. Eventually, they were ungrateful, so Allah destroyed them. Interestingly enough, at the end of their story in Surah Saba, Allah says, In their story are signs, they are lessons for those who are patient and those who are grateful. Now ponder and reflect. Why do you think Allah said that in their story, are signs for those who are patient. But he's telling you that they had bliss and bounty. Because when you have goodness in your life, when you've got a lot of wealth, when you've got good health, you need to be patient also. Some people get bored. You know, the minute they've got a lot of wealth, they say, let's go and try this haram and that haram activity and another haram activity. Why? Out of boredom. Out of boredom. Don't be that person. You need to be patient when you're going through difficulty and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you goodness. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he says, ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakha ya'rifka fi shidd. Know who Allah is. Worship Allah, especially in times of ease. And Allah will remember you in times of difficulty. Then he ends off the hadith by saying, Oh, Abdullah ibn Abbas, you should know that if the whole world, if everybody had to gather in order to benefit you in any way, they will be unable to benefit you in any way unless Allah decrees, unless Allah wishes. And if they all gather to harm you in any way, they will be unable to harm you except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes. And in, similarly, in the verses of the Quran, Allah says, وَإِن يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ Some difficulty or affliction befalls you, nobody can remove it except Allah. And some goodness comes your way, nobody can take it away from you except if Allah wishes. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, know who Allah is. If you want to truly benefit from the power of your ibadah, you should know the one who made this ibadah compulsory upon you. Get to know Allah by his great names and his great attributes. You know, when Allah tells you that he is Ar-Rahman, he is the most merciful, take a moment to ponder over that name. You read it in Surah Al-Fatiha several times a day. Second verse, and some mention, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha. 
you acknowledge that your Lord is the most merciful. Imagine, the most merciful. Call out to him. Of course he knows your problems. Do you think he wants to put you through difficulty and hardship? But at times the issue we have is we don't have conviction. And we don't know who Allah is. You know when Allah tells you that he is ala kulli shay'in qadir. He's able to do all things. He has the power and the might. He is omnipotent. When you read this verse, when you understand the power of Allah, then you know that the one who you are worshipping, you think your ibadah will go to waste. You think when you call out to him and he promised, he said, Ud'uni astajib lakum, call out to me and I will respond to your dua. You think he'll waste your dua? So have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get to know Allah and be close to the Qur'an, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll find, bi Allah, you will taste the sweetness of ibadah, you taste the sweetness of worship, and you'll benefit from your ibadah in your deen as well as in your dunya and in the hereafter where you need your good deeds the most. With those first few words, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and to grant us beneficial knowledge and to make us from those who are close to the Qur'an. And may he gather us all in the highest part of Jannah. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.